Margin. What is margin? Should you use it? Is it the right thing to do for you? I'm going to talk about margin right now in this video, and I'm going to uh, explain it from an actual experience, an actual first-hand experience. I've experienced it. I've used it. I've been in it. I've been out with it. I got margin called. I know what it feels like. I, ha I felt the pain. I even broke down in tears live on my show. It wasn't very pleasant. It happened live on the show, and I'm going to cover it all for you now in this video. So, what is margin? Well, if you decide to buy stocks with borrowed money, with somebody else's money, that is what margin is called, very often called leverage. You're leveraging your investments. You're increasing your potential to make money. Also, please note, to lose money because you're borrowing somebody else's money. Now, they want that money back. If they lend you money, they want their money back with interest. Obviously, why would anyone lend you some money if they um, if they didn't uh, get anything out of it? So if you're using margin, of course, they want to get some money for the privilege of providing you with margin. They lend you money to buy stocks and then you pay them interest. OK, now, is it right for you to use margin? What's the pros and cons? Well, if you uh, use margin, you've got increased buyability, increased buying power because you've now got more money. Now, for me, typically, they double the amount that I have in my portfolio. So if I've got 100 grand, they'll give me 100 grand. Every brokerage is slightly different. That's not really important. It will show you what your buying power is here. As you can see, mine is $87,000. So how do you even start with margin? Well, if you've got cash in your buying power, you can't use margin. People often say to me, can I keep my cash earning 5% on Robin Hood and use margin at the same time? Now, that would be great. That would be great because you'd earn the money in interest to pay the interest to, to Robin Hood. No, you can't. You can only use margin when you've spent all your own money. All right, they're not going to give you the money. They're not going to pay you to keep your money so you can pay them back. It wouldn't work, right? Nobody, nobody would make any money. So margin is triggered if you turn it on once you've used all your cash. And now you're kind of, if you think about it this way, you're going overdrawn. You're spending somebody else's money. You're negative now. You're using the, the brokerage's money. They're lending you money to buy stocks with. So you start using margin. Now, with Robin Hood, you get the first $2,000 for free. So it doesn't cost you any money. So should you use it? Because it's free, interest-free, extra money. Well, yes and no. If, if you think that uh, you could earn more money by holding the cash, you should be holding the cash. Because while well, you're using margin, even if it's interest-free, you're not earning interest on your cash, are you? Remember, you can't do both. If you could do both, it'd be the holy grail. Never going to happen, never going to exist. All right? So if you're using margin now, you're not earning money on your cash. So you've got to think about that. If the markets are going to go sideways for a period of time, you could have been earning consistently profits, whereas now you're using the first 2000 for free, but now you're maybe uh, in, in danger of the stock just going so, or, or even paying interest if you're using more than the 2000 free. Uh, you're paying interest when the stock isn't making you any money. You could have just earned cash and then bought, uh, earned some interest and then bought when you think things are going to start to move again. Maybe that's called parking your money and it's not doing anything. You don't ever want to park your money. That's why I don't put money in the bank earning half a percent. I'm just giving the bank my money. It's parked there. They're making money. I'm making nothing. So that's a very bad idea. I never, ever do that. It's a complete waste of time. So what you've got here now then is you've made the decision I'm going to use margin. I'm, I want to buy the market. I'm bullish. I think I can make more on the growth of my stock than I can on interest. And I always believe that. I'm always believing that on a bullish or bearish market. I always believe that because if we turn bearish and we, and we drop 30%, then we're going to come up from that point because historically, overall, the S&P, the, the market's break new highs every month, every few months, every year, every six months, every couple of years, and we just keep on going for eternity. That's how it works. That's how the markets are built to work. Okay. So I'm always 
unless they're going to pay me 20% in interest, I'm always going to be in the market. Always. Very rarely, I'm going to be sitting around with cash until I've reached my goals and then my portfolio just ticks over and I've got cash. But remember, you can always sell for profits and take the cash anyway. So you've always got access to cash. So for me, I never really very rarely hold cash. I don't see any point. I can sell my stocks any moment and get the cash out anyway. So You've decided margin's good for you. You're bullish. You're feeling like, okay, I can make more on the stocks. And typically you can on average 13% if you include the dividends and the rate of inflation. That's a lot more than you're going to earn on any interest uh, by holding cash. So if you believe that, which is a fact statistically on average over time, then you're always invested, right? It's why big businesses borrow money because they make Apple are always in debt. Amazon are always in debt. They make more money from the borrowed money than just keeping the cash. That's why they do it. Otherwise, Apple would pay off all their debts tomorrow and go, we don't have any debt. They can afford to hold the debt because they make more money investing the borrowed money than they would holding the cash. That's why margin and borrowing money exists. Okay, so now you understand the, the principle of it. Now we've got You've made the decision, you're going to use margin. So how does it work? Well, every brokerage is going to give you a different amount of margin. It will tell you in the buying power. Mine says 87,000 currently available. Remember, all my cash is burned. I've, I've used it. That's all margin. Then I start to buy stocks with my margin. If I buy $1,000 of, of stocks today using borrowed money, Okay, the first thousand, the first, the first two thousand is for free. I don't pay any interest on it so far. Great, brilliant. My balance doesn't go up. It's not like going to the bank and getting a thousand dollars, and now you've got a thousand dollars in your bank account, right? Your balance goes up. Doesn't work like that. What happens is you get a thousand dollars, for example. You then go and buy a thousand dollars worth of stock. Your portfolio doesn't move. If you look in your in your in your um, details, it will show that your uh, assets have gone up. The amount of stock that you've got, the value of that stock is more because you bought more stock. But your portfolio balance doesn't go up. What goes up is the gains on the stock that you've bought. And what goes down is the losses on the stock that you've bought. Okay? So don't think if I've just bought $10,000 worth of, uh, you know, Binky Bonk or whatever it might be, your, your, your portfolio isn't going to go up. You've got, you own more shares and your value of your portfolio behind the scenes, if you like, has gone up. But your value of what you're worth hasn't changed. Okay. Very, very important. Okay. Then what happens? You now own some stock, which you bought on margin up to a certain point. It's interest free over 2000 with Robin Hood. It, you start paying interest on it. So you, you have to now calculate that you have to earn. The stock has to grow more than the cost of the, uh, of, of, of the interest. If you're paying 5% a year interest and you're earning and you're making 2% on the stock, then obviously it's not, it's not worthwhile. You shouldn't be doing it. But if you think the stock is going to go up more than what you're paying, then there's a reason for you to do it. So you've started buying stocks on margin. I do that when the stocks drop by a certain amount because I'm, I'm always bullish. I'm always buying the market. I always believe you make more money being invested long term than you do just holding the cash. I can always get my cash out. The cash is not an issue. And if I want to buy something, I buy it on a credit card and get the cash back, pay, sell the stock, pay it off in 30 days. That way I've always got maximum credit score. I've got a perfect credit score in the United States, perfect credit score in Europe by doing that. I don't use cash anyway. Cash is a waste of time. I use a credit card, pay it off, get cash back, earn more money, blah, blah, blah. So I don't need the cash sitting around doing nothing, right? So I've made my investments. I'm bullish. I bought stocks. Now, if they go up, that's great. I'm making money and I'm making hopefully more than the interest payment. But I want to be controlling my margin. I don't want my margin to get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. It can in relationship to my portfolio as I grow. I don't mind spending a million dollars on margin, when I've got a million dollars, because the, the risk factor will be the same as it was 
where I am today at 63. So that will change over time. I'll make bigger purchases because I've got more money. The whole thing just goes up. The risk management is the same. My risk tolerance is the same, but it will go up as I earn more money. Makes sense, right? It's, it's, that's common sense. So as the stocks start to go up, my portfolio, if, 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 the, if the stock's going up, my portfolio with margin is exaggerated. That's what I mean when I say I'm beating the market. So if I share with you right now, the S&P today is up 0.5. The S&P, uh, VU that is, which is the index for the S&P that I have chosen, there are several, it's up by, by 0.49. But I am up 0.69. I've beaten the market again. And statistically, this year, it's about 85% I have beaten the market, which is great. If you can consistently beat the market, you're doing better than the 500 best companies in the world. So pat yourself on the back. Thank you very much. That's pretty good. <laughs> Don't try and do a million percent. I'm happy, with, I'm happy with that, right? That's what I mean when I'm beating the market. However, if the stocks went down, I would be... Um, losing against the market because my gain, my losses would be exaggerated. Now that's okay. Cause if I suddenly thought there's a reason, a real reason that the stocks are going down, there's a real reason. Something really dramatic has changed. The fed have said, we're not going to ever reduce rates. In fact, we're going to put rates up 10%. That's a problem. That's a macro condition problem that will bring the markets down. I can sell very quickly some stock. And I'll be selling the stock I bought at the bottom, first in, first out rule. I'll be, bu I'll be selling stocks I've made profit on back in January. So my margin will get reduced. My risk will get less. My interest payments will be reduced. My, mar my, my management, my risk management, uh, I, I, I make my portfolio safer and safer and safer. So I can do that. Hopefully that won't happen and things just keep going up and all the rest of it. As they go up, I start paying off margin. Start reducing it. And what happens then is my portfolio gets a massive boost. It looks like bloody hell, you're going to go, wow, Martin's making all this money. Oh my God. Because what's happening is if I put in cash today of $10,000, as I get paid on YouTube every month, I bring in, let's say I bring in $2,000, sorry, $10,000. My portfolio balance would go up by $10,000 my margin would go down by $10,000. My interest payments would go down. My risk management would be much more improved. I'd be a lot less risky. I'd have margin reduced. That'd be great. And that's what I do. If it goes up, I enjoy it. And I just start using the cash to pay off the money. I'm not going to buy it when it goes up. Who does that? That's daft. If it goes down again, and I catch it before it goes down, and I've got too much margin, but I don't, because I manage it correctly, I can trim off if I want to, to protect myself from what we're talking about in a moment, a margin call, we'll come on to that in a moment. But if it just goes sideways for a while, that's okay. I will just keep paying off because I'm going to earn the dividends anyway. And the dividends, the dividends on VU cover the cost of buying each of those shares on interest with the rate where it is today. So I'm, I'm happy, or thereabouts, over the year, not the one month, over the year. So I can live with that. I go, oh, so, uh, I can live with that, with a little bit of growth and a bit of, mar a bit of um, dividend payments. I can kind of cover the margin. If it goes sideways, if it drops, maybe I'll look at it differently. So that's my strategy. That's how I use margin. Now then, what happens if you get a margin call. This is what everyone's worried about. If I buy margin, if I use margin, what if the stocks go down? Do I get wiped out? No. Margin is not your friend, but it's not your enemy either. It's a tool that you use, and if you use it wisely, you win. If you don't use it wisely, you lose. Very, very simple strategy. Very, very simple. Let me explain it with my real money in my real account, all right? Click on here. This is my actual money. As you can see, my cash is gone. Obviously, I'm in margin. I've now got a $111,000 margin. The more money I've got, the more money they give me, right? It's just the way it goes. Margin used, $24,000. I am paying interest on 22 because the first 2000 is free, but I've got $24,000. Is that a lot? 
Well, it's a lot for somebody and it's not a lot for somebody else. It doesn't, that doesn't matter. What does matter is the percentage. This is what's important. If you look there, it says margin status, low risk. It's a low risk for two reasons. One, the amount of margin that I've used is low in comparison to my portfolio size, the actual money that I actually have, the, the shares that I actually own with my actual money. I've got a 65% buffer. My portfolio has to drop by 65%. Now, don't say to yourself, well, the S&P is not going to come down by 65%, so you are safe. No, it would come down quicker because I've got margin. So 65% doesn't mean, well, you're not going to be margin called unless the S&P drops 65%. Well, obviously, that's not going to happen. That's, I don't think that's ever happened in history. That's not correct. Don't live by that rule. My portfolio drops by 65% is not the S&P, even though I only own the S&P. It will come down faster because, remember, the gains are exaggerated and the losses are exaggerated. So my portfolio could come down quicker, but it isn't going to come down 65%. I am very, 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 very confident. In fact, most big hedge funders, you may remember the big, uh, I think it was called the big short. There was a big hedge fund which got as low as 20%. They, were t they had a 20% buffer. And that was regarded now as high risk for a big hedge fund, you know, big, a big organization. That was when it was too much. So I don't want to go down that low. And I'm not going to go down that low. Because as we're going up now, I'm going to start paying it back. So that 65% that is going to go 64, 63, sorry, 66, 67, 68. That risk is going to get less because as I go up, I'm going to be paying it off. So let me share with you some details. Click details, view details, right? So as you can see, my portfolio at 63,000, uh, th that's what my portfolio is worth, what I have. But the, but the difference, what, I, what, what you saw earlier, is the amount of stocks I actually own. 65%, a $41,000 buffer. Available margin is 87,000, right? If I scroll down here, you can just see it on the screen here. The first 2,000 is free and I'm being charged 6.75%. Daily, $2.58. That will go up in the next couple of days as, as yesterday's trades uh, settle. It will be about $4 a day. I'm making, it's costing me $4 a day and it will tell me exactly. But look how much I've made today. $395. Now, don't think that's better than it is. I'm making $395 on all of my portfolio, not just the borrowed portfolio. But the portfolio, uh, I've got about 20, I've got 24,000. So I've got quite a bit out of the 63. That's why I'm beating the market, why I'm beating by 0.1. So out of 391, I'm probably somewhere in the region. I mean, it's hard to tell, but I probably made 100 bucks, probably. It's hard to tell, but it's only cost me four bucks today. So it's okay. I'm good. I'm doing good, right? I'm doing good. I'm going to get the extra dividends and so on and so forth. So I'm very happy with my, with my margin. Now then, the biggest thing as we get onto margin call, what is a margin call? Every stock you buy has a risk. Let's go from the very, very lowest risk, the very best. If you buy the S&P on margin, you will see here that it, uh, it has, uh, where is it? Just, to, just let me find it a second. Um, where is the risk? There you go. Margin maintenance. The margin maintenance, we'll talk about that now, 25%, that's the lowest, that's the lowest you get, right? The, uh, the, the, the uh, S&P is the most stable asset, the lowest risk you can, you can possibly have. You'll never get less than 25, I've never seen less than 25%. Let's now go to Virgin Galactic, and if you're buying Virgin Galactic with margin, 100%. 100% maintenance. Now, what does that actually mean? What that means is, depending on what you buy, 
the, the risk is higher. Obviously, the brokerage want to make sure they get their money back. They want to make sure that you're going to pay the interest and get their money back. That's the two things they care about. They're not bothered about the interest. <laughs> They're not bothered because they take it out of your balance every single day. In fact, they do it, they calculate every day and they take it every month. Every month it will say, Martin, we are charging you today $180. Thank you very much, margin or whatever it is. My balance will drop, my, in, my portfolio balance will drop. They'll take it, they'll add it to the interest. They'll add it to the, to, to the interest. They've got their money. They've got their money and you go, hang on, they haven't got their money at all, have they? All they've done is add it to your account. They, you didn't pay them anything. No, I paid. I paid it. The money got extracted from my account. They got that money. That's how Robinhood make lots of money. They got that cash in their bank. Thank you very much. We've got that money from you. You now owe us more. Okay, that's how they get the money. Now then, what happens if you get a margin call? Well, if today the stocks go down and down and down and down and I don't start selling and protecting my risk and I won't be selling because there's no reason. There's, no re there's, no, there's nothing on the horizon which would suggest a massive, huge crash. So I won't be selling at a small reaction. I'll be buying at a small reaction. But let's say it did keep going down and down and down. And remember, if you're buying a high risk stock, I'm using Virgin Galactic as an example, that can drop very, very quickly, go to zero very quickly, and you get margin called very quickly. It's not going to happen with the S&P, another benefit of buy, using margin to buy the S&P. I can sit back and relax and not really care and just keep benefiting from it, okay? However, if you buy a high-risk stock with margin, it can drop very quickly. Now, what happens is this. As it goes down, your buying power, you, you will see... You will see on your on your details here that little that, that little pie chart, if you want to call it that, that little cake. That buffer will get smaller and smaller and smaller. Nothing happens when that happens. It just gets scarier and scarier and scarier. When you hit the maintenance line, the maintenance is exactly what it suggests. It, it suggests it suggests maintenance. You have got to do some maintenance. You have got to do something about this situation. Now, if you bury your head in the sand and go, oh my God, I don't like this, or you don't pay attention, they will sell your stocks to pay off the margin. Not all of it, enough to raise you above the margin line. Then it falls again, they'll sell some more. Then it falls again, then they'll sell some more. Until all your stocks are sold, but you still owe some money. Now, not knock on your door. That's it. However, if you're a smart investor, you don't stick your head in the sand. You're not out on holiday going, I don't care what happens. You're watching it. You're either adding cash, which can raise you above the margin line, or selling stock, which raises you above the margin line, or you've bought stock that never went down in the first place and you've got a big enough buffer so you're not bothered. No problem. No margin call nothing happens. So if you get margin called, and it happened to me, it happened to me, I got margin called, but I didn't get anything bad happen. Uh, Robin didn't contact me and go, you're in trouble, you're, you've broken all the rules. Nothing happened. They said, you're approaching margin, you're approaching margin. I started selling a few things, added some cash, whatever. And then it went, you're on a margin call. That means you've got to do something. You can't just... It's not beforehand, it's now happening. You've got to add money. You've got to sell shares by the end of the day. Otherwise, we'll do it for you. So they never actually actioned a margin call on me because I took action myself. I dealt with it. It was no problem. I sold some shares, added some cash, things went on and all the rest of it. So that's what margin is all about. Margin is not your friend, but it's not your enemy. It can elevate your gains. It can elevate your losses. You need to understand that. You need to decide if you're going to buy a stock with margin, do you really want to buy a high risk stock? 
Now, of course, if you buy something like Virgin Galactic on margin and it goes up 100%, flipping heck, you've made yourself a fortune. That's what people call leveraging. They leverage up. They double up, quadruple up. They borrow and borrow and borrow on high risky stocks and you get rich very, very quickly. And remember, you don't pay any, any, any interest whatsoever on the first 2000 and you don't pay any on unsettled funds. And that's what a lot of people do when they short and they buy borrow money to short GameStop and all of these things. They borrow money on the day, right? A huge amount uh, uh, on the day because they think that GameStop is going to explode today. So not only am I going to put all my money in, I'm going to borrow all the money I can. And if it goes up, I'm going to become rich. And they will. And they won't even pay any interest on it because they'll sell it before the end of the day, before it even settled. And remember, you've got a couple of days. And that's why the SEC are changing that because it's allowing people to borrow tons of money they cannot afford that the brokerage doesn't even have. Everyone's borrowing money to buy a stock. What if it goes down? Where's the money coming from? That's why responsible brokerages bring the gate down. So that's what happens when people borrow a lot of money, the brokerage's money, to buy stock Great if it goes up. But again, how do you pay everybody? That's not been generated. So very, very important to understand what margin is, what it isn't. If you are going to use it, understand all of these things I've explained in the video. Make sure that if you're going to buy, use margin, uh, perhaps don't buy it, use it to do something risky. Like if you borrow money to bet on red or black, that's risky, right? Whereas if you borrow money to buy a house, a house that's going to go up in value, that's probably a good idea, all right? So, you know, think about it. It's not your friend. It's not your enemy. Use it wisely. It's, it's, it's fine. It's not a scary thing. It's, it's, uh, it, it's not as risky as options. The, the, most, the, 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 the least risk is buying stocks, then margin, then options. Options is the most risky. Margin is in between in my opinion, just buying stocks is the least risk because it, it, if, if it goes down and, and, and you've got no margin, you haven't lost anything until you sell it, right? So there's no risk at all with, with buying stocks. If it goes down, it goes down. You're not in any worse position. It's just, it's just the, uh, the value's gone down on the day. So anyway, there is my full explanation of, um, of uh, margin. I hope that helps. Click above my head for further links, uh, things that I think might be useful. I've got a whole how-to series uh, of videos, how to do this, how to buy a stock, what is margin, what is a dividend, what is uh, the stock market. Yep, some very basic videos, but they provide simple simple answers. I'll give you the link to that. I'll also put that down below here, a very simple uh, playlist, and you should all watch it. And just the basic fundamentals, what is a stock? What is a dividend? What is an ETF? Basic stuff. I explain it to you in the best way. It's just simple uh, way because it is simple, really. Uh, you don't need to make it complicated. Over here, uh, I'll put that playlist. More information down here, my alpha spread list, where you can review all those stocks and you can get yourself the alpha spread software. Now, if you do like uh, Robinhood and you do think that this video has been useful to you, I love Robinhood. I'm going to also give you a link above my head, down below in the description. You can get uh, on the all links button, martinlucas.com and down below here. You can find links to Robinhood where you can get Robinhood Gold. And if you get it using my link, you can uh, be in to get yourself a solid gold credit card worth a couple of grand. And so will I. I only need a couple more people to do it. And I will get my solid gold credit card, which I will melt down, by the way, get the gold and then buy the S&P. That's what I'll be doing with it. I'll just tell you that off the bat. I'm only a couple away now. So if you uh, want that, please do. Uh, and, uh, and also, if you use my links below as well, you can get free shares of Robinhood. Uh, I get some free shares. You get free shares. We all win. Everything is great. There you go. Over here, I'll put all that over here. Until next time, take care of yourselves and each other.